Hi there, I am Veronique Loreg from the University of Western Australia. Welcome to this course on the economics of natural hazards. I have created this video series for anyone in the natural hazards and emergency management sectors that is interested in learning how we apply economic analysis to the management of natural hazards. This project is funded by the Bushfire and Natural Hazards Cooperative Research Centre. Welcome to the sixth video in the series. In this video, we will have a look at how average annual damage is calculated. By the end of this video, you will understand the probabilities of occurrence of natural hazard events of different sizes and how we translate this information into an average number per annum. Now, what exactly is average annual damage? It is simply an indicative figure that tells us what we could expect as damage from a natural hazard over a long period of time. But we annualize it to be able to compare the performance of different mitigation measures. Let's use floods as an example. We know that different floods will cause a different amount of damage to a flood prone area, depending on the size or the severity of the flood. Large floods cause more damage than small floods, but large floods occur a lot less often than small floods. The average annual damage is the average damage per year that will occur in a particular area from flooding over a very long period of time. In many years, there may be no floods, so no damage at all. In some years, there may be minor damage caused by small floods. And in some years, there may be major damage caused by large but very rare flood events. So to be able to measure the economic effectiveness of different management options against floods of all sizes, we estimate the average annual damage and look at the ability of each mitigation option to reduce this average annual damage. The best way to understand this is through an example. Let's continue with floods as an example. First, we need to understand the probabilities of events of different sizes occurring. Usually, we refer to flood events as a 1 in 50, 1 in 100, or a 1 in 500 event. This is just a way of talking about the probability of an event of a given size or severity occurring in a particular location. We, called it the, we call this the average recurrence interval, meaning how often we can expect a flood of that size to occur. A 1 in 100 flood is, has an average recurrence interval of 100 years, meaning that on average, a flood of that size is expected to occur every 100 years. A 1 in 100 flood has an annual exceedance probability, or AEP, of 1%, which means that a flood of that size, or greater, has a 1% chance of occurring in any given year. The annual exceedance probability is calculated by doing 1 over the average recurrence interval of the flood event. So for an average recurrence interval of 10, we do 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1, or a 10% annual exceedance probability. For an average recurrence interval of 20, we do 1 over 20, which is 0 0.05, or a 5% annual exceedance probability, and so on. The size of the flood and its probability of occurrence are unique to each location, so a 1 in 100 flood in Adelaide will not be the same size than a 1 in 100 flood in Melbourne. Second, we need to load the level of damage caused by events of different sizes. So let's imagine that in a medium-sized city there is a catchment area where floods could occur. Using hydrologic modelling, we are able to see where the water will go for different flood events and what assets will be damaged. With this information, the level of damage in dollars can be estimated for different flood sizes. First, let's have a look at an example where there is no mitigation in place. So let's say that the damage from floods of different average recurrence intervals in the catchment area are for a 1 in 2 years flood, $50,000. For a 1 in 5 years flood, $300,000. For a 1 in 10, $1.5 million. 1 in 20, 4.7 million. 1 in 50, 10.8 million. 1 in 100, 28 million. 1 in 500, 62.5 million. 1 in 1,000, 
235 million and the probable maximum flood 1 billion and 530 million. Now let's calculate the annual exceedance probability for floods of different average recurrence intervals in our table. 1 in 2 years, 0 0.5. 1 in 5 years, 0 0.2. 1 in 10, 0 0.1. 1 in 20, 0 0.05. 1 in 50, 0 0.02. 1 in 100, 0 0.01. 1 in 500, 0 0.002. 1 in 1,000, 0 0.001, and the probable maximum flood, 0 0.0001. The probable maximum flood defines the maximum extent of flood-prone land, or in other words, the full size of the floodplain. It is difficult to define a meaningful annual exceedance probability for the PMF, but it is commonly assumed to be of the order of 1 in 10,000 to once in 10 million years. For our example, I have calculated the annual exceedance probability of a 1 in 10,000 years flood for the probable maximum flood. If we put this information in a graph with annual exceedance probability on the x-axis and losses in dollars on the y-axis, we get something like this, a downward exponential curve. Note that in the graph, I only show the results up to $12 million in damages but the one in a hundred years flood or other floods of larger size that have lower annual exceedance probabilities will cause even higher damages. But if I show the full curve, we won't be able to see the shape of the curve very well and it wouldn't be practical for the next explanation. Now, to estimate average annual damages, we need to calculate the area under the curve in the graph, what I am highlighting in purple right here. The figure or the amount that we get for the area under this curve corresponds to the amount of average, average annual damage. The most accurate way of estimating the area, area under the curve is through integration, which is a mathematical method that can be used to find areas, volumes, center points and other things. For these you need to have your calculus up to scratch and solve the integral in the equation shown here. The purpose of this course is not to get you up to scratch in calculus, so I'm not going to go into the detail on how to solve integral equations. If you want to learn about this, I'll put a few resources in the description below the video that you can look at to learn how to solve the integral equation. What I'll do instead in this course is that I'll show you two easy methods to roughly estimate average annual damage. The first approximative way of estimating the area under the curve is called trapezoidal sums. This involves dividing the curve into, into a series of trapezoids, estimating the area of each trapezoid and, and summing them all up. To do this, we can use the following equation. Here, we take the difference between the probabilities of two different sizes of floods, which corresponds to the distance between two points in the x-axis. I will multiply by the sum of losses for those two flood sizes. At the end, we divide everything by half. Let's have a look at how this is done for a numerical example and it will all become a lot clearer. First, we find the difference between the annual exceedance probabilities of two floods of different size. We start with the event that has the highest probability, so the event that occurs most often, which in our example is the one in two years flood that has an annual exceedance probability of 0.5 or 50%. So the difference between the probabilities of a 1 in 2 years flood and a 1 in 5 years flood is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2, which is equal to 0 0.3. And then we continue. 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1 equals 0 0.1. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.05 equals 0 0.05. 0 0.05 minus 0 0.02 equals 0 0.03, and so on. Then we sum the losses of each pair of two events. For the first pair, it will be $50,000 for the 1 in 2 years flood plus $300,000 for the 1 in 5 years flood. That's equal to $350,000. For the second pair, it's $300,000 plus $1,500,000 and so on. Then we multiply the difference in the annual exceedance probability by the sum of losses for the two events. 
we, got, we get the following result for each pair. 0 0.3 times 350,000 is 105,000. 0 0.1 times 1,800,000 is 180,000. 0 0.05 times 6,200,000 is 310,000 and so on. The sum of all this is 4,058,000. Following our equation, we find the average annual damage by dividing this figure by 2, which is 2,029,000. So the average annual damage of all the floods we had in our table is a bit more than 2 million. That was the first method, which is called trapezoidal sums. If you want a rough and quick estimate of average annual damage, there is another method we can use, which is much quicker, but is also less accurate. We simply multiply the losses of each flood by its annual exceedance probability and make the sum of that result. This is what we'll get in this case. 50,000 times 0 0.5, 25,000. 300,000 times 0 0.2, 60,000. 1.5 million times 0 0.1, 150,000, and so on. The sum of all this is equal to $1,479,000. Note the difference between the two results. So depending on what you need this information for, you may want to use a slower but more accurate method of estimating average annual damage or a quicker but less accurate method. It all depends on what you need the information for and the type of decision that it will inform. Now to summarize. For any hazard event of a given size, we have an annual exceedance probability that tells us the chance of an event of that size or greater occurring in any given year. To know these probabilities for different hazard events, we need to work with experts in the relevant hazard. We use these probabilities to calculate the average annual damage either through integration or using one of the two methods explained here, trapezoidal sums or the simple multiplication method. Okay, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we will look at how to estimate the benefits of mitigation options.